What's up in the legal tech world? Find out in the Lex Factor briefs. Quick hits on the latest happenings in the industry and discussion from your Lex Factor hosts around their potential impacts on business. Feed your brain and empower your firm at the same time. All right, everybody, welcome to the Lex Factor Brief. So this is new to the Lex Factor about what's up in the legal tech world. So quick hits on the latest happenings in the industry and discussions from your Lex Factor team about their potential impacts on the business. Things to really feed your brain and empower your firm at the same time. Of course, we have Brad here again Hello, today. Hello, everybody. Hey, Brad. How's it going? It's going well. I'm glad to be here. Of course. He is it's always all, glad it to is, be here. It is. It is. Because you bring cupcakes. Okay, I don't have cupcakes today, so stop lying to our (gasps) listeners. You're not supposed to tell them that. (laughs) They're not supposed to know that. You're so deceptive. I know. (laughs) I do have water, though. It's almost like a cupcake. Almost the same. Almost the same. It's it's for us that's doing a diet, that's on a diet. Brad, all right. On that note, um, we also do have (laughs) Randy Shorefighty here today. Welcome, Randy. It's his first time. Yay. First yeah. Timers Club, yeah. right? That's yeah. right. Where's you, my Where's my uh, membership card? You You get that after the second. Brad drank oh, okay. that also. <laughs> yeah, I ate it. I thought it was part of the cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> it was delicious, by the way. What, what kind of icing was on it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So we're doing something a little bit different today. We are. We're, we're looking at uh, different articles that have came out recently and uh, diving in a little bit, and hopefully it'll be helpful to somebody out there. Absolutely. Um, one of the first ones we're, we want to talk about today is uh, about uh, non-lawyers uh, being able to purchase law firms. It came up recently in Utah, and we wanted to dive a little bit more into that topic and kind of get our thoughts on it. So uh, maybe Randy or Lauren, what do you guys think? Well, first of all, I – and I don't know how many states it is or if it's all – every state, I didn't know you had to be a lawyer to own no and or clue. operate a law firm. Yeah. Totally. I had no clue, but it is – it's happening in a couple states already now, not right. just Utah. Exactly. We, you know, one of the things that I've seen in just industry, not just the law industry, but – Take uh, take dentistry, for example. I know that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, they call it the corporatization of the dental organizations. And basically what they do is they come in and they buy several offices. And uh, they're easy to reduce cost or recoup cost because if you buy this firm, this firm, this dentist, this dentist, you have overlap of uh, different resources that you don't need. So mm-hmm. you're able to consolidate. You're able to, to you know reduce your cost but still maintain your competitive competitive edge there in the different markets. So I could see something similar for that in in law offices. Yeah. Ex- exactly. And before we came on the air, we were talking about this. You know, it could be a second career for someone. Let's say they were in a corporate game for 10, 15 years, and maybe they didn't want to go the franchise route for whatever reason. But then, you know, maybe there's small law firms or a solo law firm here, there. They can buy these, you know, smaller law firms uh, one at a time, and then build their own corporate law firm, for lack of a better term. That may not right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I see it two ways. So, Brad, you brought up a good point when you you mentioned. You know, you come in, you buy all these smaller firms. There's a lot of benefits to that. You get mm-hmm. that that cost sharing, cost cutting, things like that. But one, I think you're going to potentially hit a situation where you know somebody comes in, they have more of this business background, more of a corporate background. They buy up all these smaller firms, and there's that potential that they're not going to take the time to truly learn the industry, the mm-hmm. ins and outs, the operations efficiencies. And so at that point in time, you're still being led and you're still being run by a person or an organization that maybe isn't taking the time to learn what needs to be learned about your industry for it to run efficiently. On the flip side, however, you know, the majority of law firms in the U.S. are solo to small firms. So what that means, it's either you practicing yourself or it's you and a couple other people, right. maybe another attorney, but you probably have a paralegal, LOA, some sort of admin, something like that. You went to school to be a lawyer. You know, you've obviously learned a lot over the years. You may or may not have somebody within your firm that's a little bit more business savvy. So 
on that side, you're having people come in who are non-lawyers, who have these big business backgrounds, tons and ex- tons of experience, and they're buying you guys up, and they're running these firms so efficiently because they have that business background. They know all about revenue optimization. They know about marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. They know who to target, what to do. They know processes. They have more of that business background, so I think there is that opportunity that smaller firms would be at a disadvantage because these bigger guys, they're running their system so efficiently. They know how to acquire new new clients. They know how to save money and cut costs, and they're running their business a lot more efficiently, unfortunately, putting you out of business. So I, I think, like I said, it could really go either way. You're at a disadvantage as a smaller firm because you maybe don't have those same skill sets, and you're not able to run your firm as efficiently. On the flip side, you could have this big wig come in, buy firms, and not pay any any attention to how the legal industry works. actually works nope. right. and how it needs to run to run a good firm. So I'm kind of at the standstill. I can see both sides, and I don't know if it's a, a great, awesome thing or if it's just, you know. Yeah, I don't know if it's a great, awesome thing, but I do see both sides of yeah. the coin. I see that, you know, that smaller law firm that. Uh, is worried about business, worried about, doesn't have that knowledge on how to run the business, Mm -hmm. how to market it, how to do all those different things. So, you know, them trying to compete in that industry is going to be difficult Mm -hmm. if all the other ones are growing around them, especially with the revenue that the others would generate. They have more to spend, perhaps Mm -hmm. on marketing or whatever it may be. So you need them, they need that assistance to really help them to understand it. But then you have the flip side. It's, It's really like what you were saying. You have the flip side. You have those ones that are bought, mm-hmm. right? You have that, like you said, big wig. I like big, how you, you said like the that, big wig. That's the official. That's because t- I don't have hair. La- oh. Yeah, so so I, I can never be <laughs> a big wig. Everything goes back to Brad not having <laughs> yeah, hair yes. and Brad liking to <laughs> yes, eat. <laughs> yes, so uh, big wig comes in. But what's interesting about the law industry is you do have to have specific knowledge of the yeah. law industry. That is why attorneys do what they do. I mean, so you have to have that, uh, that knowledge to really be able to understand the industry to market it. So they're going to struggle. There's going to be some really big growing pains for Mm -hmm. those individuals because they're going to try to run it like a business. What you need to do is run it like a a law firm business. You got to have, you know, that knowledge. So that's that partnership. That's a great point. And that's why, you know, we say at Lexicon too, when we have clients that use our marketing services, It's one thing to go to an agency or to someone who runs some sort of business and have them do marketing for you. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we've had over 10 years experience in marketing solely for firms. So we understand that there are certain things that you have to do in marketing to be compliant with the bar where someone may come in who's used to running a business. They know how to do marketing and they know there's probably some legal ramifications, but there's things they're not going to know. And there's a lot bigger chance that something's going to happen from a negative aspect, mm-hmm. you know? Right. And, and and another thing that I was thinking of as, as you both were sharing your comments was one thing it comes down to is time. So again, if I'm in a small law firm, whether it's a solo or two or three person uh, law firm, you want to grow your law firm, but you're trying to both service your clients, go to trial prep, but then you also have to manage the firm. Yeah. Even if you're, you know, it's two or three partners running the firm. An individual coming from the outside, whether it's a business person or whatnot, they have that expertise. That's true. And they're they have not that they're, time. they're not right. They're not trained to be a lawyer, but they've had success in the business world. Yeah. And then going back to some of our some of the previous topics of Lex Factor podcasts, data analytics, cybersecurity, mm-hmm. IT, mm-hmm. you know, cybersecurity, yeah. Absolutely. Security. So right. Security. Again, so <laughs> Brad likes to talk about yeah. the security. It makes him feel good. He it feels does. like a big wig then. Yeah. Anyway, oh. Oh, Brad used the um, example of uh, dental offices. Mm-hmm. That's even in optometric offices, part of my background. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's say there's a young person coming right out, I don't want to say right out of law school, but maybe three or five years out of law school, they've worked in a firm of whatever size, but they want to strike out on their own. My guess is they probably still have uh, student loans to some degree. <laughs> So their their startup costs, even if they're working out of their home, mm-hmm. there are mm-hmm. certain startup costs. They still have, you know, maybe some loan payments. You know, let's say Brad decides to leave the IT game and he wants to buy a couple of law firms because he has knowledge and experience and success in doing that. And so that gives that young attorney an opportunity 
hey, you know what? I want to become a better lawyer. I want to still have my own law firm, but you know, the, the introduction of this business person or this other professional coming in can help me do that mm-hmm. from the business side. Right. Yeah. It's, it's such a mixed bag. It really is because when you look at both the eye industry, uh, you know, eye doctors, things like that, dentists, orthodontics, you see these corporations or leaders coming in and purchasing. What you see then also, though, is a degrade in service mm-hmm. because they're instituting for lack of a better way to say it, corporate policies or corporate yep. mandates or or say this is where you must draw the line. But what it is is it's not adapting that to that specific market. So there are specific ways that you market to – uh, for glasses or for to get your your teeth cleaned or whitened or things like mm-hmm. that. It's the same in the law industry. It's It has to be more specific. So you kind of have to, uh, you know, those individuals that are going to purchase it, they also need that assistance from the other side, from the law side on how do I market to people for this industry? Mm-hmm. How do I use the information that's gained in this industry to better myself? How do I charge? Because even the charging mechanisms are different than any of the other industries I'm sure that they own businesses in. Mm-hmm. So they have to think through all of those different aspects. There's so many different nuances to the law industry that they're going to need assistance with. And ma- the attorneys, I'm sure if you're buying a one-person att- uh, law firm, two-person, they're not going to have time to teach that business owner, exactly. how to do that. And they that. probably won't so, want to. Right. right. So either way you look at it, there needs to be this combination of law-specific knowledge and business coming together to make a practice or group of practices better. And I think that's really what's going to take it off, take off oh, yeah. is figuring that aspect of it out. Yeah, and that's why, you know, like John said a couple weeks ago on the show, that's why that data and the research is so important. And, you know, I'm a marketing gal here. So, I mean, think about these firms. They came, they've been purchased by a larger organization. And like you said, that organization or that person needs to understand the legal industry. They need to understand what an attorney's clients need and they want and what they want to hear. So they're not going to go and just put out a print ad and just literally have any old copy on there. For them to be successful being a non-lawyer, they need to do the research. They need to understand who that firm's clientele is, where they live, what they do in their free time, what their income is, what their concerns are, before you can speak to them properly. You know, you may have all the business experience in the world. You could have been doing it for 40 years. You could have run a successful retail company, but you switch industries and let unless you truly take the time to learn everything everything about that industry mm-hmm. front and back your clientele your consumers you're going to fail yeah you know another thing that i find interesting about this and we'll have to do some fact checking on this but i'm always of the understanding that an attorney can leave a specific office and take those cases with them yeah. uh, when you think of a dentist or you think of an optometrist or things like that I hardly ever see my dentist. I Mm -hmm. see the person that's cleaning my teeth. In many cases, I'm going to keep going to that office. But if my attorney leaves, I'm going to follow the attorney in a lot of cases. So that's a different concept from a business perspective that people buying those firms have to be mindful of. Yeah, It's almost kind of like, uh, I'm going to say free agent in professional sports, but in business, how can you grow fast Mm -hmm. or faster? You buy acquisitions right. and mergers. So if there's, you know, if there's one attorney at this firm over here that's just bringing in business hand over fist, you know, what what's to keep that individual from being poached? Yeah. Right. Even easier now. So. Yeah. What I, I kind of wanted to ask you guys before we signed off here today, let's look at this two ways. Like we mentioned, you're that small firm and you're going to have an advantage because these firms that are being purchased by, you know, people with more of a business background aren't going to adapt correctly because they're not going to do their due diligence and they're not going to learn about the legal industry. How can you use that to your advantage versus on the flip side, you have a business person come in by a firm and they're going to be able to run those fir- that firm or those firms more efficiently, more profitably because of that cost sharing and because they have more business strategic experience. How can they take advantage of that? What do you two think about that? One thing that my mind jumped to immediately was the valuation of that firm's book of business. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. You could have 10 attorneys on staff, but you know your book of business, your revenue may not be what you would think it is. So 
that's where someone from the outside with business experience can actually give you maybe a better idea of what your firm is worth mm-hmm. or could be worth. Yeah. So that 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 could be that, but that's both of I think an advantage and a disadvantage. Yeah, I really yeah. I really think of it maybe just a little bit different. I think you know I'm coming in from a business background. I want to purchase these specific law firms. I really need assistance in understanding the potential of those law firms, mm-hmm. not so much the existing rate. I mean, I would want to know that, how much they're they're bringing in, things like that. But to truly understand the law industry and the potential of that, I'm pretty sure it's far greater than what's currently being performed. Yeah. I mean, there's we all have opportunities for improvement. So it's really understanding those pieces, looking at the information, analyzing it. And I, I would need help with that from a business owner perspective. Then switching sides from an attorney perspective, I'd really want my the new owner to have a bit of a legal background or a partner in their pocket Mm -hmm. that understands the legal industry that can help them to make the right decisions and not leave it up to me that I just sold my firm and now I'm an attorney at it. Yeah. Yeah, So it's a nice mix. Yeah. 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 That's what that's what friends are for. You that's know what right. I mean? <laughs> but no, you do. You got to have that support. It's the best of both worlds. You have business and you have legal. So um, thank you guys both for being here again today. Obviously, if you guys want to learn how to take advantage of all the opportunities out there and just learn more about what's going on and how you can improve your business, on the Lexicon website, there is a knowledge base section, tons of articles, tons of resources, great way to spend your Saturday and Sunday when you're <laughs> off from work. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, check that out there. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in today and we will see you and hear you on the next episode of The Lex Factor. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.